I couldn't fall asleep to Nal Nathrak or The Body or Lana Del Rey. I'd have to go back to my childhood, so it would probably be Indiana Jones. So for me, it wasn't just the character of Indiana Jones, but it was everything that was surrounding that, which was I actually started writing Indiana Jones fan fiction when I was like nine and ten years old. So that was really my first foray into writing, into fictional writing. Oh, Japan and New Zealand and China. To experience the culture, uh, you know, I'm a real big fan of architecture and just seeing the regional, what regional buildings look like, look like in different parts of the world, you know. So I grew up in California, so it's, it has a very particular look, but it also has a very singular look because everything's really new. So coming here to the East Coast or going to other countries, just see a lot of things that are really different from what I grew up with. So going to Japan and New Zealand and China, uh, getting to see the Shire in New Zealand. <laughs> um, you know, those are all things that uh, I want to experience. Um, well, I had to have music on. I can, I can fall asleep to anything if that's what I want to fall asleep to. You know, I can fall asleep to Nal Nathrak or The Body or Lana Del Rey. You know, it's kind of whatever I'm in the mood for, I just need something. I don't want to know what it is. <laughs> Just take me out. <laughs> All right, here's a funny one. So I got sent to the principal's office in fourth grade. I went to a private school, and we were supposed to draw a nativity scene, and I did. Except I, wrote, I drew uh, Mary and Joseph as Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> so I went to the principal's office for that. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like that's one of those bad wishes that it comes true. It's like a, some double meaning, but I probably just say writing, I guess. Yeah, sure, make me a better writer. I'm sure it'll come at a cost, but let's do it. Oh, it was Jurassic Park 2. All those like, you know, 90s Spielberg movies really were like a big jumping off point for storytelling and just being involved in art. I had a childhood friend growing up that was uh, like a Spielberg fanatic and a Robert Zemeckis, the guy that did Back to the Future, a uh, fanatic. And I didn't really know anything about directors or writers. You know, I'm like eight or nine years old at the time. I just knew movies and actors, but he would be like, oh, this was directed by this person who also directed this. And he was kind of the first person that turned me on to the idea that, you know, a director or a writer has a body of work and you can kind of see a th through line. And that was really the beginning of my interest in, you know, music and and film. Probably Sleeping Beauty. It's like the most black metal one there is. And if you watch it when you're a kid, it's kind of spooky. Mute it and just like, you know, play Immortal while you're watching it and it'll work. <laughs> I don't know, probably a Bond villain. You gotta go with a Bond villain. Probably go with a, probably be like Dr. No. Like an island out in the Caribbean. You know, and James Bond after me, that sounds good. <laughs> Before I got my driver's license, I was really into bikes. You know, I kind of grew up in a rural type area, so you could bike everywhere. We had these asphalt streets, and I used to jump off the storm drains, you know, trying to do tricks. I think I tried to do like an X up or something, and couldn't get it back, and really just went like right over the front, and just, you know, I'm not wearing any pads or anything, of course, and pretty much took all the skin off my right arm. Oh, got to be the roadrunner. No matter w what circumstances, he just really didn't care and still got through unscathed. So I think it's kind of a good parallel for how you should live your life. Just don't get caught up in whatever's getting thrown at you. Just go around it. 